everyone, welcome to my channel. This is AJ. Today we are drawing a portrait, I mean a half portrait with colored pencils. Last week in my video, I showed you how to pick skin colors for your colored pencil portraits. And today I am doing an example and I'm going to draw one portrait for you. If you haven't watched last week's video, I'm putting it up right here for you. If you feel like it, you can always subscribe to my channel to show your support. Let's grab our colored pencils. We are drawing a portrait portrait so this is our final product as you can see I used many different colors here all my pencils are on my desk and I will show you one by one which colors I chose for which part of the face this is the original photo by the way and you can see that I created the first draft by just looking at the color changes, where the highlights are and where the major shadows are. Of course, everyone has a different sketching style, but with colored pencils, it is important to mark the color changes. Here are the colors I decided last week and I'm going to use all of them and even more. Let's start with the eyes, the iris and wide of the eye. You can see the colors I used on the left, chocolate, dark umber, sepia, black, light umber. And for the wide of the eye, I used French grays. 10% is for the lightest area and I actually burnished with it. And for the shadows in the eye, I used 50% and 30% French gray. As you know, the pupil is always black, so I did the black part like that. And for the shadows in the iris, I used mostly dark umber and sepia. I try to avoid using too much black in my colored pencil drawings. That's why you will see me using a lot of sepia or dark umber colors instead of black. Let's talk about shadows now. So throughout the skin, I used almost the same colors, of course, not at the same time all of them i used a lot of sienna brown which is a brown with some red undertones and i also used dark umber and sepia in some shadowed areas in the darkest parts probably for example uppermost part of the iris i used just a little bit of black and light umber is mostly my normal mid-tone shadows Henna and Nectar are the colors that I used for the red places. So this photo actually had a lot of red tones, pink tones, and orange tones to it. That's why I tried to use also goldenrod for those orange parts. Now you see me adding all these little lines, and I also use my sepia at the very bottom of the eye, but you have to be really, really careful and not to make any thick lines or don't put any pressure on your pencil because then it's not going to look realistic and here you can see that i'm adding all these red tones i'm going to be able to burnish them later after i add all my shadows and undertones you see light umber on the left part right under the eye as well in the smiling lines, the moth lines had mostly red tones and light umber. I'm adding also some sienna brown. Sienna brown is mostly in the wrinkled parts all over the face. Let's talk about lightest shades. So the lightest shades are important because they are the main tones of the face. Right now you see me burnishing with eggshell. Burnishing means basically I am putting a lot of pressure on my pencil and this way trying to combine all the colors underneath. Of course, I use some beige as well, especially on the nose and on the right side of the face. Wherever you think that there are more orange tones, I used beige and if it was more yellowish tone i chose cream or eggshell here i have the beige in my hand and you can see that while i am shading i am avoiding the white highlighted parts it is difficult to add white much later so i think it is better to avoid those highlighted areas from the very beginning on the right side of the face, there was mostly orange and yellowish tones, so I actually used my beige instead of eggshell there. 
and there was a big highlighted area you can see that I am shading there with my light peach color You see that even though we are working on the same phase, we use different type of tones and colors on each specific area because the light changes, the reflection of the objects around you changes. That's why we have to use different type of tones each time. Here you see me, I am shading again with the light peach. Also, I'm gonna use this tone on the highlights that are on the nose as well. But see, I am using my pencil in a way that I'm holding it from the very back and I am shading just very, very lightly. When it comes to eyelashes and eyebrows, I only use three colors. I did the eyelashes with black because I think it looked really, really transparent with dark umber and sepia, but it looked really good with black. And for the eyebrow, I mixed dark umber and sepia. In order to get the best results from hair in your portraits, I think oil-based color pencils are the best. For example, Faber-Castell Polychromos. I'm adding those all red tones as well, as you can see. Inside the eye, there is a pinkish color. I use nectar and blush pink for that. And for the lips, of course, we have to create some shadows first and then add the main colors. So my first layer was a blush pink layer. Very lightly, you can see that. And I added with my black all these shadow areas, all these lip lines. And then I added a permanent red, some sort of other type of shadows existed there. And I went over with it with my Crimson Lake. I also used a little bit crimson red. I didn't write it here, but whatever red you have, you can use it. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Let's talk about final edits. At the very end, I added my highlights with my white color. And also in order to brighten up some parts, I used my buff titanium from Karandash set. I highly recommend that pencil too. It is great for burnishing lighter skin. Of course, I'm going to add some more red on these lips because I think my highlights didn't look really realistic there. And also you can make the darkest places even a little bit more darker. But honestly, once you burnish, it is hard to go back and add shadows or highlights. So it is much smarter to be careful about them in the very beginning, especially the reflections in the eye, the reflections we had on the cheek and on the nose, they are better avoided from coloring from the very beginning. One final edit that I usually do is going back to eyes and added some more eyelashes or eyebrows if it's needed. And also going to the wrinkled areas, the gesture areas, and to make sure that they are going from darker to lighter shading to give that curvature effect. Again, you don't have to have a big set. You don't have to have exact colors. Let's say you have a very limited amount of colors and you don't know what to do. You can always mix what you have and try to get those colors. For example, if you mix red and brown, you might have a sienna brown. Here you see that instead of burnishing, I am also using my blending stump. Blending stump can be used with colored pencils, especially better if you have multiple layers already. It is working perfectly in this case, but sometimes if you don't have enough layers, it's not going to work the same. It's almost finished, guys. We are doing the last edits, as I said. So to wrap it up, we had orange tones, pink tones, red tones, yellow tones, and also beige tones. This is the final result, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in my next video. We will continue doing realistic portraits. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching my video. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe. And for my real-time narrated tutorials, visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash Stay with art and love.